Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of the Creative Exchange. It's your girl, Sarah Dietschy. Rhymes with Peachy. Today is a, I always say it's a special episode. It is super special. They're all special. I have, they're all special. But it's a little different because I think it's reflective of a week that I had previously. Um, and that I am very excited about just a chill conversation with my favorite human. Who are you? My name is John Hill. I'm the boyfriend oh, of Sarah Dietschy. That was beautiful. Thank you. That was yeah, so yeah. good. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with John. We did a episode. It's probably like episode number three or something it was earlier right off the bat. on the podcast. And it was really good. We went into the background of your life and you're a professional skateboarder. He's also a YouTuber. He does all of the things. And I so do I'll link that podcast in the description below. But today I just want to jam on a few things. Let's do it. Let's rock and maybe yeah. roll a little bit. And I kind of want to give an explanation to the funk that I was in in right. this past week right, and right. we're just gonna have a conversation guys so sit been here. back yeah you've been you've been i've yeah. been watching it i've been exactly. a part of the funk because you know what every struggle that we go through together we go through together. together so good yes and also quick note for the people watching we're at our apartment right now so that's why you can hear the sirens right <laughs> we're always right in the middle of midtown the sirens in new york are insane so it is actually crazy that the quietest place in manhattan for me is the office because it's inside of a building it is and our offices face alleyways so yeah. nothing's happening in the alleyways exactly. it's like where nobody can hang out so exactly boom. love you new york the weather has been fantastic oh. and over in la you guys have been melting on the west coast ha Dude, chill, to okay? Them it sucks. Losers, I've been over there like 115. Oh my god. It's going to get hot for us and then they're going to laugh at you because it's That's usually true. perfect there. That's true. Um, but another thing that I wanted to know is I wanted an, an excuse to test out my mobile podcasting Ooh. setup cuz this isn't the normal SM7Bs that I usually use. Uh, that link will be in the description below for like the legit setup that I in my studio, but this is my portable one because traveling with that is insane. So we are holding mics right now, just like we were going to go perform or something. Yep. They're, Open mic coming at like, you live. Yeah. The normal Shure SM, not SM, the Shure 58 A's. So it's a dynamic microphone, so you don't need phantom power, um, but I'm just holding it. So no need to transport a stand. Exactly. And we have little pop filter things on here and then i'm plugging this straight into my zoom h6 and so that's it you literally need three pieces including the X xlr mic so guys let me know how it's sounding amazon affiliate links down below <laughs> boom there you go uh so yeah this is going to be much better for my traveling setup and with that i have one more note and then john i will just get into we'll get into all of the things all the weeds baby yeah i know you're probably like sarah shut up this no, is just like a keep talking forever. i can listen to you talk forever oh thanks babe um so one more thing is i have recently somewhat wrapped up my docuseries how to podcast where i showcase the behind the scenes doing the podcast i think it ended on such a good note the most recent episode was the live podcast where i got all of my good nyc friends who were doing a pop-up shop earlier that day and we did a live podcast with you guys out in the audience in new york city it was such a good video so fun to edit and that was episode four to how to podcast and i want to end that series on a q a because a lot of the comments are more questions about just how to do things and it can be with youtube in general but i want to keep it mostly in the podcasting realm it can be anywhere from sarah were you nervous when you interviewed gary vaynerchuk to what is the exact microphone that you used for this time in this episode it can get as technical as you want it to and so episode five the final episode of how to podcast is going to be that q a where i want to feature y'all's questions so if you're watching this video watching this podcast on youtube you can leave a question in the comment section below and if you're listening on apple Podcasts, anywhere blah, blah blah you can tweet me or comment on my last instagram so at sarah Dici, everywhere so that that summed up all of my sarah peachy announcements john i could have done it for you i knew yeah. all of what you just said and really? i knew you were gonna say it wow i did yeah we're like uh it's not telepathic but what is it called two peas in a pod we're two peas in a pod that's exactly what it's called <laughs> so I'm mean, going to get to why I had such a weird week last week, right. but 
recently I have been listening to Couples Therapy. Yeah. Casey Neistat's and Candace Poole Neistat's podcast. Where Quick note, I haven't heard any of it okay, yet. So you have, okay. None of it. But I've heard what you've told me about it, and yeah. that feels like I've seen enough. Yeah. So it's basically them just unhashing their relationship drama and so it's actually a very stress stressful podcast to listen to (laughs) just because it's like them bickering at each other but at the same time because we know and love them from the vlog it's kind of has that kim kim kardashian or just kardashian effect in general where you might not like that you watch the kardashians but you're gonna watch it it's entertaining right right you're looking so, for the drama. You're like exactly. hoping they say something meaner and meaner and meaner. Exactly. So I've been listening to it and it's just it's just a very interesting relationship because there's not one way to do a relationship, right? But in the podcast, they were saying like things like I hate you or I hate this about you. Right. And I was like, Oh my oh my gosh. That's so intense. so I was like, John, what do you hate about me? What do I hate about <laughs> you? So many things. Um yeah, I mean, honestly, that's a, that. It is weird because with me and you, I think we talked about this before. I've had a few relationships in the past. I'm older than you, like kind of by I would say not a lot, five years. I don't think it's that much. I'm 27. You are 23. So about to turn 24 in one month. Okay, okay, so eh, yeah. a little over three years. Anyways, um, our lives are different. Mm-hmm. I've had like a few relationships that I think are comparable to that. We weren't married or anything, but it was like that intense, that negative. So our relationship. It's weird because you kind of go into it like, oh, this is a relationship, I guess. I go into it like, this is crazy that it happened, like we don't ever argue. I mean, we do argue, but they're so minuscule compared to arguments I even have with friends. You know what I mean? Like, I, for some reason, it should be more passionate, but we're like, our little beefs are kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah, all right. That, that's but like our, our squabbles. I feel like our arguments also resolve to a point that needs to be addressed and we get there without most of the times without being super i don't know weird about it or yeah, mad about it yeah. like i think we've gotten weird maybe twice and it yeah. lasts like i think the longest argument we we may have fallen asleep to an argument before yeah. but that's probably have the most, we though i think we may have maybe like once, once. Yeah. maybe once maybe i hate I doing have. that it's yeah worse. it's yeah, like yeah. you never want to fall asleep angry yeah uh, yeah i mean we our our relationship is you want to talk closer to it Oh, no, no, no. Okay. I'm just, our, I'm just yeah, kidding. our relationship is, it's, it's you know, the not as excitable version as it is on YouTube, but the way that we're like, ah, 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 we are like that. I mean, we're like that. And then we, yeah, we don't argue like that. But I, I'm very familiar with the relationship, like their dynamic. Right. That's a very normal thing for me to see my friends go through. And like, even when he talks about it, I'm like, oh, that's what all my friends say all the time. Like, ah, I don't, you know, marriage is what it is. Blah, blah, blah. Or like my girlfriend, you know, relationships are what they are. Um, and it's like when you ask anyone, like, are you happy in a relationship? They're usually like, yeah, it's great. You know, of course there are things, but, and like when people ask me, we've talked about this before, but mm-hmm. I usually just try to be nice about it. So I'll be like, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Instead of like, dude, it's perfect. <laughs> well, it's like, and it's like, you can find a good middle ground. You yeah, don't, you yeah. don't have to brag, I know, but I'm I know, like, I, know. I don't want people to think that our relationship is on the rocks. I know, but what I, what I realized lately, the, the reason if you don't mind me dabbling in this for a second, I, I, I've realized that I'm in a good place in life because I find myself trying to make my life sound less exciting to people all the time. Like every, that's a good problem to it, have. It's a very good problem. And, and it happens almost every other day when someone asks like, what have you been up to? How's it been going? Especially people from back home. I always go like, it's fine. It's fine. But I don't tell them like, dude, my life is drastically better than it was. I'm having a really good time. I'm extremely excited almost every single day. And like, I've like learned to cope with stress in a way that is exciting almost like I'm like I get very stressed and I'll yell and scream that's good and I think it's so important to recognize those times where you are happy Mm -hmm. as well because that's something also that they talked about how Candace has um, like a nostalgia problem where she'll always be living in the past and be so stoked on oh I remember that trip to Mexico so romantic and fun and then Casey would be like no, that was terrible. Remember, you were just yelling at me the entire time. And she went, oh, yeah, true. And so I think that's something that's like can be so bad as the nostalgia thing. We have the opposite problem, though. We never think about the past, which yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, well, we'll, we have our vlogs to look yeah, back Yeah, we'll to. go to the vlogs and we'll watch it. But we, we constantly try. I always say this, but it's like don't get nostalgic. Just uh, like pretty much live every moment 
like right. it's your last or whatever. I don't know. I had something way better than that. That didn't sound that smart. <laughs> but the point, they constantly make memories. Mm-hmm. That's my point. Constantly make memories and then like always build a moment to where you're like, I can't wait to think about this later. But you just don't because you're doing that until you're on the deathbed and you're like, you know what? I had What's a good one less life. thing I can do and yet slap someone in the face just because it's exciting and then you die. So why I brought that up is because I'm like, oh, okay. Can we can we provide the same amount of like tea? Because they're just spilling the tea all over the podcast. I'm like, what was our last argument about? Yeah, I mean, totally. I, I, that I don't mind. You know I don't mind talking about anything. I know, but it, I like it, to be more. Yeah, your, your, your image is definitely like, I don't know. I think it works really well for you where you're like more reserved and stuff. And I think that works better, period. But I yeah. have zero filter. But on my channel, I try to be like nice and fun. But like I'll talk about things that are crazy. And, right. Um, but yeah. Well, anyways, and some so things I'll talk too. About <laughs> and some things too I just feel like isn't people's business. That That's right. That's right. I'm I, like this is probably the most protective thing I am yeah. over right now. Our biggest our biggest issues is my insecurities. That's our, our biggest problem mm-hmm. in our relationship is the fact that when Sarah gets a lot of success, I get jealous instead of proud, which is a horrible, horrible thing. And I and it's like and it, it's something I'm aware of. So like when it happens, I'm like, it's like if you've seen The Incredibles too. Oh, yeah. It's exactly like that. Like the husband who's like, oh, you're off fighting crime. How and relatable is that movie? For it us? actually was. Exactly. <laughs> and our baby is just like. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, seriously, like in the movie, yeah, the the wife's like off fighting crime. And she has a really successful night. And she's really happy. And he calls her and he's like gritting his teeth like, congratulations, baby. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. And that's how I feel. But like at the beginning of our relationship, I wasn't even that nice. She would, she had an interview with Tim Ferriss and she was like, I get to interview Tim Ferriss and she knows that I'm like a, obsessed with him in an unhealthy mm-hmm. way. I don't think I even told you to begin with that I was interviewing Tim Ferriss. You did. He, no, he, you know, you did. did I? This is before you knew about how crazy my insecurities okay. were. So you told me and I literally was like, no way. Didn't say congratulations. Didn't say anything. Walked out the room and like sat in the corner <laughs> by myself for like 30 minutes. And, and, and like, cause I was sitting there being like, go in and be like, I'm proud of you. But I was so unbelievably jealous. Like that was one of, which I is feel pathetic. like, I feel like the first six months that was a biggest problem, but it was also a big thing about relationships, whether it's like a romantic relationship or with your family is I figured out you need to address and learn how that other person and how you like give and receive love. So in those circumstances, you wouldn't address it full on. So I really didn't understand what was going, but you would just turn super cold and you would just like leave the room or blah, blah. And like, I, that like confuses me because Mm -hmm. for me, it matters like you being in the same vicinity of me and like talking in a way that isn't like, uh, right. I know. I'm like and salty for some reason. So yeah. that, yeah, that was an interesting time. And I thought I could, I thought I could fight it before I had to mention it to you. But cause even in the moment, it's a really weird thing to say, look, that's so awesome. But I wish you wouldn't tell me about your successes, like to your boyfriend, it, which, which, which like, was a thing, which you, which, which I you know is still me. a thing, you know, like, yeah. like here, here's, a, here's to an extent of what it is. Like, um, I'm just gonna say that it's not that weird, but she would get brand deals, and I basically told her like not to tell me how much she gets paid for them. Yeah, which is understandable. Which is understandable because we because yeah. we also had to talk about money too, which I didn't understand where you were coming from because I right. came from a family where just everyone was super open about money, which is and typically super what it is. practical. And and for me in my brain, I'm like, oh, John, he's like my best friend. I'm living life with him, and it wasn't. And I wasn't sharing everything and I was, it was, it was trying not to be in a boastful way, but sometimes it would just come up like, Oh, like blah, blah, blah is doing this blah, blah for this much or whatever. Yeah. I can't believe I get to do blah, or something like that. Um, but yeah, like, so money had a big, it, it, it had to do with that. Weird, too. And it's not weird that you felt like it was okay to tell me that because on Twitter, I posted something right after that. I was like, when is it okay to talk about money? And everyone pretty much said whenever. Also, that's something you do as well is we'll have a little thing where I can tell you leave the conversation salty and then you go and tweet about it. I don't tweet about us, like, but I ask yeah, the question. But it's like I'm the interested. biggest subtweet ever because it's totally about it, it us. It is a subtweet, but it's me trying to find the answer from your perspective. Like asking like, <laughs> when is it okay to talk about money? Right. I mean, of course a part of that is me being like, I want to hear people say like never because that's how I feel. And everybody disagreed with me. So I was like, okay, well clearly I'm doing something wrong because 
you know, that is a total my family thing. My family hates talking about money. They say, don't ever talk about money. And like money was like a big issue in our household, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, we just don't talk about it. And it's really weird. And I, I, my parents have no idea how much money I make. And like my parents recently opened up a store and my dad, he gets like disability for being in the military. So like if he has like an extra hundred dollars, he'll be like, Johnny boy, like how you doing with money, man? I'm like, fine. He's like, are you sure, man? I could send you like 50 bucks if you need it. You know, I'm like, yeah. I live in New York city. What's fit? You know, that's, that's three meals. Well, yeah. Anyways, whatever. But sometimes, cause sometimes from the other perspective, <clears throat> of talking about it is it almost in my brain it almost loses its like sparkly wonder or value you know it is it is something that I see as freedom and I want to be smart with it and I want to prepare like prepare the future that I want with it but at the same time it's not all controlling it's not what I think about 24 7 and I think having open conversations about money like can lead to that but at the same time i think with couples you have to find a balance right because i don't want to romanticize money either but i do have this i don't that that jealousy thing is is definitely my biggest flaw by far and i i have it crazy with money too if i if i had a friend who was telling me like oh you did a brand deal with mountain dew well i got paid a hundred thousand dollars for one video i would be very jealous and yeah and i wouldn't anyone would jeez right and i wouldn't be able to like and and but you shouldn't be at all in no way but for you it would be somewhat crippling i feel like it would exactly it would like make me like go sit in a corner for a minute and rethink my life which i'm gonna get into this my youtube channel the reason that there was a long while where things were changing constantly, I kept being like, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. I'm try-, And I kept changing it up. It's because people would tell me their stories. I would get really jealous and I would try to configure out, like configure out, figure out how to alter my channel to be more like theirs and do what they're doing. Like with you, especially, you know, you were like, I'm doing brand deals because I make content that brands see. And they're like, wow, she could just make a video about our company like this video that she made and we'll pay her. So I was like, Oh, well let me try to make videos the way that companies want them. And that like messed my channel up for a little bit. Like it really got people not interested in the content. Cause they're like, where are you, John? Like, what are you doing? You're this, this isn't for your audience anymore. This is for a company. So that, that the jealousy cripples me in more ways than one is all I'm saying. I mean, it's normal even for couples that are married to have separate bank accounts. Yeah, you know? yeah, I, and I think that yeah. is, and I think that's probably what also ruins a lot of marriages is the whole money thing. But I think yeah, there's a happy balance to everything, right? Because it's I think it's good to like plan for the future together. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm definitely like I'm someone who fights really hard to decrease my ego as much as possible. I'm a huge advocate for like don't have ego at all. But I, our situation, our relationship, any problems that we ever have is. Y- almost a hundred percent on my insecurities mm. like, like there, there's very few times where you'll do something that i think is like off-putting mm-hmm. like where i'm just like whoa i can't believe you did that it's usually like <laughs> like what i uh, know there's there's very few times yeah saying. there has been times where you well, said honestly, things that because i'm like oh I, that's weird but, but i that's another thing too that is somewhat weird about your family but now i understand the context but you grew up with no one telling you what to do or yeah. really any sense of authority. Yeah. And I grew up in many different structures, even outside of my family, where there was always like a point person of authority. And I understood, oh, even if I don't like that person, I have to like respect that position. Right. So very much so in the family household or even outside of that, I was very used to the whole like, okay, you are my leader or the position of authority and I'm going to respect what you say or whatever. And in turn with that, especially in the family dynamic, um, I am used to people telling me what to do, but also being in a position to tell other people what to do. Right. And I think that's probably something that gets on your nerves the most is I'm used to exchanges of like people suggesting things and then me suggesting things back. Right. And then sometimes you take that very personally where I'm like attacking your character. Yeah. So yeah. one (laughs) And like your, your way of life. Is it almost, yeah, it almost sounds spoiled in a sense where it's like, nobody can tell me what to do, which, which in a sense it was basically because when I was a kid, my dad, my parents, they hate police officers. So they raised us to hate cops. So they were like, when a cop says anything to you, they're they're the rob they're the burglars. Like you call you call your friends on the cops. You don't call the cops on people. And I'm like, okay. And coincidentally, being a skateboarder, I actually had 
hundreds of bad experiences with cops. I mean, literally hundreds. You know, I've probably had 300 cop encounters, uh, 500 security guard encounters. Yeah, I've always had a, not just a problem with authority, but seeing actual security guards do bad things to us as And kids. being a skateboarder, that just throws oh. you into that area so much every single day. Every it's, day, every day. I deal with security every single day. Yeah. Of my and life, the only 10. time when I encountered cops were just like, I'm a good person, like strolling around school or, you know, we never. Yeah. And it came it came to the point where basically like the way this world works, there's sort of a unspoken hierarchy where someone is your boss. So they tell you what to do. Someone is this way. So they tell you what to do. Like and then one day it hit me when I was young where I was like, oh, so if anyone tells you what to do even if they won't admit it and people around you don't want to say it, somebody thinks they're above you in some way. Like if somebody tells you what to do, they think they're above you in some way. And the reason I know that is because I, I did this with a friend of mine, but he basically just said like, John, go do this. And I was like, oh, would you say that too? And I said someone he respected. Like I said, would you say that to the singer of Coheed and Cambrio? He's like, no, because that'd be weird for him just to tell him to go outside and do something. I was like, that means that there's some level of authority that you feel over me, but not him. And why is that? And, and I, that sounds so silly because, but if you look deep into it, it is this like you think you have this subconscious hierarchy and you think you're above someone. That's what it is. I feel like, but in a lot of time, in a lot of times, it's not a, I'm sure when people are in positions of authority, yes, they feel somewhat that feeling, but at the same time, that's also how a, a lot of things in society work. And that's how things get like, done. It's just like in the office when Michael and Jim were both the boss. That doesn't work out. There has to be some level of Michael is the position of authority. And, and usually someone gets there because they're the ones who make decisions faster and, right. and more aggressively. And right. that's what is needed. If there's, I mean, if everyone, I was going to say if everyone was like me, but you know, I'm like, I'm that way too. I can, I can like command but i always feel like i should ask but i do it in a commanding way and it's kind of i don't know it's yeah time and place right Right. and sometimes when it's in the context of a relationship sometimes it could be weird but that's why you have open conversations about why did you respond that way or why did you ask me that why did you come and then you talk and work it out which we do i think i think yeah with us i think yeah, that's the biggest problem is me being too jealous and and not and it's so funny it's, to be in a relationship where we're not jealous of. Yeah, no, that's what I was about to say. It's funny that you're jealous of the career side instead of the always working with other dudes you should side. Be, yeah, well, yeah, but you should be stoked that we are in a day and age where I'm jealous of no, your I, career you're right. <laughs> rather than like you being promiscuous in some way or whatever. Which, well, I'm not promiscuous by any measure, but <laughs> by any measure, but no, I a lot of my videos or podcasts dudes i work in the creativity and tech especially in the tech side and not unfortunately but there's just a lot of dudes it's, and it's a total i dude industry. it's a total dude fest and i i always hopefully i can be an example to more ladies getting into it that, and, but that's why i have so much respect um, i keep interrupting you no, sorry but that's why i have so much respect for you and that's why when i met you i was so attracted to you because you're also attractive but well, thank you but uh a big thing was just like i you know I, i've been around so many people and i love i love when someone is an underdog first of all and they just really prosper so to see you in a male-driven uh industry like tech and you were just so like you're like what's up i'm sarah blah blah, blah. and like when i showed up she's like on her laptop being like i'm getting work done right now i'm like the first time we ever Yo. met <laughs> I, yeah i literally the first time we ever met she's on her laptop in in like the side of a building getting work done uploading a video and i was just like this is like this is a baller this is someone I, it was the first time i ever met someone who was like me in right. the sense where i would rather work than breathe so no just kidding but I, I i love working i love getting things done right and i just didn't see that drive uh, around the people that I was surrounded with because of my industry. It's like the women who are usually in, you know, like skateboarding and fun, whatever. You know, it's like party mm-hmm. life. It yeah. kind of goes along with party life, which I'm not, but I just happened to be in that world because I was a skateboarder. So a lot of the women, you know, they were just like, they, they weren't driven in that way. And right. and it's like, it's just really cool to see that. And uh, they were more driven by what skaters could I hook yeah, up they're, with? Well, they were more driven, like, just like all the other skaters about like what their p- immediate peers thought of them. And they wanted to like, you know, instead of mm-hmm. instead of the big picture, like you were mm-hmm. focused on the big picture. Everyone I was surrounded with, even still today, sometimes when I go to the skate park, I talk to people about their ambitions and stuff. It's very now, 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 which is great, but it 
they don't really understand what's going to make them fulfilled. They're just like, we're going to go party tonight. It's going to be great. And if I can't walk tomorrow, that's fine. Because tonight's tonight. And I'm like, that would be very unproductive for us. Very unproductive. (laughs) I would never do that. Yeah. There's a little insight to our relationship. Every relationship is different. So you can be with someone who you don't hate. And I hate the fact that <laughs> a lot of people are, that's true. I hate the fact that a lot of people are in relationships. This, this is so universal and uh, miserable. Mm. That's very universal. And I feel like you, you haven't, you know, you're not super relationship your whole life, but that's I, what literally, this is like, honestly, my first real relationship. I dated a dude freshman year of high school for five months. Yeah. Well, most people I talk to, most of my friends, most people I know have something to complain about when it comes to their relationship. So what we have right now is like this very, it's, it's like, I want to say too good to be true, but you know, you hear people also really highlight their relationships. They're like, Oh, it's so amazing. And I've always been like, they're lying. Mm-hmm. I've always thought that like they're lying. It's not that good. It's, it's not true. It's great. But yeah, anyways, whatever. Sounds silly. Well, you're someone who and I'm going to rub it in people's faces for once. Okay, good. Do that. It's perfect. Like it's been honestly perfect. And and like (laughs) if we didn't have even the slightest bit of argument that we do, it's very slight, like maybe once a week for like 10 minutes. I say we have a little one every other day. Yeah, maybe a really little one. And then like a substantial one where it moves our relationship forward in a way. Yeah. Maybe once every But that makes it more that makes it perfect. Yeah. Yeah. If we didn't have Because if we were the same people in the first six months of our relationship that wouldn't be fun because yeah. we've learned and grown so much together and that's what makes it fun. Right. And I always want to give the advice like, oh, if you're miserable, move on. But it's impossible. Like that's so hard for people, but it is like tr- you have to try to take practical steps away from someone who makes you miserable. And this is the one thing I want to mention. I don't know if this is a problem with you, but one thing that I've never related to is when people say um, like – get out of poisonous relationships. I've never related to that. Because oh, because we drop them like it's hot. I know. And I don't, and sometimes I think that makes us jerks, but then I'm like, no, that's a problem we'll never have to yeah. face is the fact that, yeah, well, when we have someone we don't like, too, oh, you know, yeah, it's if there's like, someone we don't like, they're out in a second because yeah. we understand the importance of how short our lives are and how essential it is to have people around you that inspire yeah. you. So, so if you have a friend or anyone who's putting you down and it's not beneficial to your life, there are exceptions. Yes. Like family. I know you say just because they're family doesn't mean you have to hang out with them. But if they're family, I think they have some more second chances, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Um, they but know yeah. your life better, too. Exactly, exactly. But drop them like it's hot if you need to. Let's talk about... My last week was just so weird. So a lot, not a lot has happened, but mainly two things. One, redoing my office. So it's like my office now, which is weird. I used to share it with John and it's just a, yeah, I kicked you out. It's a studio space in Tribeca. It's at, you know, 368. It's awesome around creative people, but it's a, it's cool because it's a big, not a big space, just a big square. And it's like my canvas, right? It's and space. it's it's everything that you dream of. Having your own workspace and studio in the middle of Manhattan. Oh my gosh, pinch me. I'm so lucky. But the whole being a white blank canvas is so intimidating. And so it's a process. Painting walls and installing shelves and blah, 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 blah. And that also means that I don't have a place to really shoot and film and edit and stuff. And then also... I've been trying to freaking make a website, John. Yeah. Saradici.com. Basically, it started out with I have a lot of things going like right now. I have a lot of projects and stuff. And I don't believe that you need a website right off the bat. I think it is very important to just create. Create, create, create. Create on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. I think the social medias are the best place to create and put out your stuff. Jeez. So, yeah, so that should be like first and foremost, right? But when you get to a point where it's like, okay, having a hub for these things would be helpful, you know, a website is cool to have. And that's what I've been working on. And I'm not a designer. So a lot of things have tripped me up on just like how to do certain things. And I'm using Squarespace to make it. And it, it turned out to look good, but it's just taking a lot of work, right? And so the, the uncomfort level, is that, a, is that a word, of doing something that I'm not very good at, designing a website, putting things, blah, blah, blah. And then the office kind of just like has made, and then having 4th of July last week, 
and people not answering emails and stuff has just made for a weird explosion of a week of like I couldn't finish any videos and then IGTV was announced and then I got really overwhelmed and this is what I want to primarily talk about got really overwhelmed with oh my gosh this is another platform that is in my realm because I I haven't gotten intimidated by Twitch or Snapchat or things like that because I know they're really not for me right now. But Instagram, I love Instagram stories and posting on the feed. And so when something like IGTV comes out, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do here? And it's, and it's this confusing, the lines are blurring guys between a destination and distribution for content and promotional stuff for the content. So I'm having this like brain cluster crap of a thing of like, okay, well now Instagram is divided into stories, IGTV and your main feed. What is considered the destination? What is considered the place where you put unique content? And then where is the place that you promote uh, standalone stuff? right? Whether that's a YouTube video, a podcast. And so, yeah, my brain was just really confused. And I know the best thing is to just create and blah, blah, blah and do it. But I found myself in this place of decision paralysis, right? Isn't that what it's called? Yeah. Or paralysis by analysis. Paralysis by analysis and have been in a creative funk yeah. Like, I mean, well, the second I ever get intimidated, I immediately go into a creative funk. So it's like you have to do your best to avoid that creative funk. And fortunately for me, the, the difference of what happened in our weeks, because it seems like a lot of times our dynamics switch. The, the, the week that you're doing bad, I do good the, and vice versa. It just seems to happen that way a lot. Um, I just know that this week for me, my decision became very clear and then everything else became easier. I think for you, usually your vision's very clear. And as you just explained, everything came in at once and you're like, Oh, gotta be creative. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're right. Like, I mean, I think the second that I, I think about how to be creative for IGTV, which is going to be a concept, I will get very stressed. I I don't know if there's a way around that. I want to do something with you. I think that would be fun. I think it would be great. I think it'd be. I think it would be really fun. And, and that's guys, a, do you want like an IGTV show <laughs> with John and me? I will <laughs> vote down below. But I will say, I think with uh, with these things, you have to do different content. I mean, you're mm-hmm. saying like you're, you're saying maybe YouTube. An example is like YouTube is your one place where you place the most creative content that you can do, yeah. right? You make it your amazing creative shows. And then Instagram is sort of a promotional tool that has like clips from your YouTube. Right. And then IGTV could even be like a, a sub form of that. But, you know, like in my head, I think what works best is I, I think we've already, there's so many outlets to already promote our YouTube channel. I use Twitter. I use Instagram. It's like boom, 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 promotion, promotion, cut the bull schnoz and then just post like the best of the best on the other socials. So with IGTV, since it is like YouTube, in my head, I don't see promoting my YouTube channel using another thing that's right. just like YouTube. And it's your like, time. It's definitely the place. And that's why it freaked me out so much is I think it is the place for unique content, right. which is terrifying to me. It is. It is terrifying. And, and and it sucks because, you know, everyone who I've been seeing is on IGTV. It is. It's just a extension of their YouTube channels. That's what it's been. Yeah. And, and with me. And I'm ready to see something new and fresh. Right. And you I, know? I have so many. Like there are so many things. What are your ideas? One idea, I, I explain this as a joke, but I, I kind of just want to do things that are weird. That's it. Walk into a grocery store, buy a ketchup bottle, walk out and pour the entire ketchup bottle on my head in the video. Literally, maybe not that exactly, but <laughs> but things things that are just weird because it's like, because I also want to figure out where my head is with stuff like that because it's just something that doesn't seem natural. And I feel like trying things that are unnatural sparks your brain to think of better and creative ideas like so if i did that of course that's like a f- weird thing to do mm-hmm. i could actually settle on something like that was fun and people like this version of it maybe i can curate it to to fit and and there's always topics that i want to talk about that just don't mesh with my youtube channel right. there just is like you know i always more asian stuff maybe truthfully yes there's a lot about the asian culture there's a lot about like veganism in a sense and, mm-hmm. and i hate i hate even using that word but Cause you know, it's we, like, I talked about veganism with the, um, Beck and 
Iman. Oh, they, oh yeah, because they're vegan in the, from the van, A ton. Right? Yeah, we talked about it a ton. Yeah, that, that's a really weird subject to me because I, I understand how hard it is to hear those conversations because it's basically someone who's arguing with, with a huge way of life. Like, it's not just like you prefer the color orange. It's like... It's like a religion. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> what keeps you alive. Food is what keeps you alive. And for someone to be like, hey, you're doing the thing that keeps you alive wrong, nobody wants to hear that. And, and I understand that. That's why it's like... I couldn't do it on my YouTube channel because I already have an audience. It's not fair to be like, guys, let me preach to you now. But with IGTV, if I start it off, I'd be like, hey, this is sort of a vegan thing if you're interested. Yeah. Well, and I think, no one gets alienated, I really. think we saw that too in other people's videos. I remember when Ben Brown started talking about it and then he Was didn't. Was he pretentious about it though? Um, Cause you can suck. He, he can be pretentious yeah. about things. So, um, but he, he, <laughs> yeah, he had a lot of trouble for that actually. Yeah. So he started talking about it and was on his high horse about it, but then stopped being vegan. Oh my And so that's gosh. when, yeah. <sighs> so he turned, he turned to veg and then I think he like kind of just, he literally shrink- turned into a vegetable. Yeah, dude. He's Holy like crap. now a big piece of broccoli. Oh, that little broccoli. He's such a piece of broccoli. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So, I mean, that's exciting to talk about things that... Yeah, th- th- yeah. there's basically other things I'm just as passionate about. Not just... Very passionate about mm-hmm. like that. And, and yeah, the thing with veganism... I wish there was a different word. Plant-based. Plant-based diets. Yeah. And, and, you know, like with me, it's, it's, it's a strange conversation because one reason the conversation excites me so much is because I think whether or not you go vegan or not, it's fun to talk about where your brain is based on tradition. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah. and, and, and I see these videos like quick example. I've said this before, but you know, I'm, I make jokes about eating dogs cause I'm Korean <laughs> and, and in every sense, it's just a joke. And yeah. like, you should be like, ha, huh. I mean, you can not think it's funny, but to think it's wrong. That's I, I only do it. And sorry to, be a hundred percent transparent with this, but I only do it because I, I want to invoke the conversation of, listen, the truth is if you eat meat, you don't have a leg to stand on in that argument. You can't tell me that it's bad to eat dog. If you eat pig, you just can't because pigs are smarter than dogs. They're more domesticatable, blah, blah, blah. That whole, and it, Fight in the comment section, guys, I, I know, I know wherever that, you're listening. I know to that this. sucks to hear, but it's like, I'm not, and I'm not even saying that you, sh- it's funny. Cause I'm saying that, if you eat pigs, you just shouldn't get mad at someone who eats dogs. I'm not saying that I'm mad at people who eat dogs or pigs. I'm saying, because I'm not. Yeah. I don't care. In in Korea and China, they'll eat dogs, you know? And it's like, just based on tradition, you know, there's some places that eat won't eat cows because they're the holy one. You know what I mean? It's like, it's only based on tradition. And I think that conversation is so important because it's not just about the animals you eat, but it's also thinking on a grand scale of how your actions affect things. And I think that's so and, and like affect the world. Yeah. And, and that that empathy, like if everyone tried as hard as they can to always be like to to dig into that empathy and mm-hmm. to feel it, I think a lot of the arguments that we have wouldn't happen. I think a lot of the, you know, selections of who runs things wouldn't happen. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, you know, gosh, I'm about to just I'm trying not to go too far. But yeah, like yeah. A, a big thing was um, Trump became president. That is a big thing. I don't, I don't, I have no ba- negative or positive thing to say about that. People are like looking at our faces to see the reaction. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to say that when he was being elected, you know, he, he got the minority, most minorities didn't vote for him. Most minorities voted for uh, Hillary or somebody else. And then most white people in America voted for Trump. And, and whether or not what side you're on, I, I think it doesn't matter as much. Well, it doesn't matter because I think the conversation about why that happened is really important. And I think it's a very important conversation because there's clearly a divide. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how do we unite with that new information that we have and now the, found? Exactly. Well, we just argue more. It seems like that's yeah. what the it world's like solution it just causes is. More and so it's, it's, Instead it's of weird because about why like, yeah, well, cause on both middle, ways. both ways. Cause middle America cannot even fathom what the these elitist coast people are thinking right. and then the c- people on the coast can't even fathom how middle america would think about xyz like the and bobby lee interview we watched today yeah how delusion so bobby lee i l- i'm obsessed with that dude right now yeah. i love him so much and he's a comedian who's on mad tv and does, yeah he has and he, some podcasts he had a podcast before trump got elected and said there's no way trump can win from the stuff he said about minorities it's impossible and in the room they're like 
are you serious? Yeah, of course he can win because yeah. this is America. It's ma it's more white people than minorities. And he's like, no, because more people are going to empathize with the minorities. He's like, Trump will get 10% or less. I'm like, see, that's and that that's a disconnection that people sometimes in the in the elitist coast, which I yeah. like to live. I love living in L.A. and New York because yeah. for me, it's. Well, I think it's more because. That, yeah, whatever. Well, no. Yeah, because I think the elitist coast also have the biggest spectrum of people they do and so that's why they empathize in, more with, yeah right. in new york you can be on the subway with a millionaire ceo and also a cleaning lady or dude and you can have conversations or interactions just you can have such a spectrum of experiences here and i think in other places as well where there's just like different ways of life and so you are able to look through the lens of empathy in a lot of the situations right and i think everyone should and i'm not saying that i'm a certain way or john's certain way because so many times we'll see a crazy liberal tweet on twitter and we'll just be blown away at how stupid it is right or we'll have a conversation with a family member that lives in the south and we'll be like how can they not see the way we're looking at it yeah. you know so it, it goes on both ways but i think people owe it to themselves to like if they can afford it, if they can make it happen to get beyond their bubble. And if you do live in the coast, maybe visit Texas or something. Right. Maybe, maybe go to South Carolina. Go to South Carolina. And, and if you live in Texas, see what you can do with like submerging yourself in the culture of a city on the coast for like three months or something, because I think it is so valuable. Yeah. And it, and it definitely works both ways. Like I, I, I don't think that, California people are delusional completely, but I will say that New York and California are very unique and that is definitely not the majority of the country. Mm -hmm. you know, isn't Texas bigger than both? Texas is just massive. But I don't yeah, know exactly, right, right. but. And, and yeah, and like, so you got to think there's, that's two states mm -hmm. and then you got to think there's 48 more yeah. and the mentality of most of those states fit closer together than they do with New York in California. Right. And, and so, so and when, when like, I, yeah, sorry, so when, when I, when I heard Bobby Lee's thing, I was like, that's crazy that he thinks that, but he just could not see, he could not see why he would win. And being from South Carolina, I was like, Oh, I think it's very likely that he'll win. I, and, and yeah, I don't know. Well, cause I think a lot of on both sides, the whole politician thing is you attach yourself to certain ideals and characteristics that people are, like their life is structured by that belief or that blah, blah, blah. So even if Trump isn't a true Christian, I mean, we don't know anyone's heart, but he's going to play on that super hardcore because he knows that the vote that he needs are from those people. Right. And that's the thing with a lot of us when we see things, especially I think YouTubers, when they see stuff that Trump says or stuff that any politician says, really, you see the act. You're like, oh, that's funny that he went with that tactic. Instead of thinking, whoa, he said that, and I feel that, we think, like, that's an interesting tactic that he used. Because I think, you know, media and entertainment is so predominant in New York and L.A., our brains are wrapped around the idea of creating fake content, hype yeah. content, uh, getting clickbait. Like, we live those lives. Yeah. And of, not in the whole thing of, of a like, lot of times everything. those and those the snippets that you see and things that you see on the news or on Twitter – they're so not the full story 95% of the time. Yes. You know? Yes. And I, mean, I, I could literally talk about this stuff forever. Yeah. Well, even just a very controversial thing that's been in the news lately, but even, you know, the kids in the cages and separating from their families, which is terrible. I mean, that is awful no matter what side of wherever. I think we can all agree that there should be a process of people coming into our country. Sure. But also... These people are human just yeah. because they're not Americans doesn't mean that they should be held to this like lower degree of just like being civil. Right. Which, you a, know? which a lot of people feel. And it's, I think it's very subconscious with a lot of people to feel like they're superior in some way. And, you know, it's 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 a hard conversation. And, yeah. uh, but even with that, there there was so much stuff going around that, you know, we saw that picture of the kid in the cage or whatever yeah. that was floating around. And there was 
like you pointed out something that I didn't even pay attention to, but in the back there were like black kids, black kids. And the main character in the main character, main, he yeah, looked character. Asian. He was, yeah. he was Asian. Yeah. He was Asian. I was okay. Like, he was Asian. The kids so, in the back are black. So this picture is yeah. real. That's so, what I concluded. This was a picture that every, every celebrity was posting. Every news outlet like was posting. like 146,000 retweets. Yeah. About the kids in cages at the border or whatever. And it, wasn't true it wasn't a picture of a kid what was it it was a fake picture of a uh a kid who was protesting right it it was a not a kid who was protesting it was an adult who was protesting who got kids to be in cages for this protest ironically he was like crying yeah yeah so i look at the picture i'm like oh my god right and then when i saw i'm like this is way too good of a picture the kids aren't mexican and and and, you know like that bothers me too obviously because it's like dude you posted something that was fake and mm-hmm. everyone empathizes and feels with it, but it's not real. And but, it, but, it spreads like wildfire. Right. And the issue is real, of course. Yeah. But you still have to either delete that photo because it isn't real or comment. And which he did. He was like, Oh, I found out this was from a thing. But of course he's not going to delete something that has 146,000 yeah. retweets. And like Card- Cardi B posted that picture. Yeah. Every post that picture. And I understand, okay, at the heart of it, it's probably evoking empathy where people need to have empathy towards that situation where it's needed, but it's such a thing to just spread. Oh my God. I'm not going to say fake news. Cause that's like so meme but it's a thing to where you don't know who to trust. You don't know what to trust. And it's so confusing as a person who wants to be a part of not, you know, like not the system, but I want to, voice opinions on things but at the same time for me in terms of a personality online I've always had the perspective of I enjoy discussing these types of things and I learn more and I think other people have better experiences when it's like one-on-one conversation with with family or friends or like going out to eat with six friends sharing stories getting empathetic just about our situations and I think that's how real change happens is really just talking and listening yes like that's huge right listening yeah. other people and don't just stories. try to befriend people who have all of your same opinions yeah. be open to have a conversation with someone who might disagree completely exactly or with someone who looks different than you exactly like that's that's something a lot of the country is scared to do mm-hmm. is have a conversation that with someone that looks different but you know there's a there's different opinions yeah right like women have a different experience blah blah yeah. everyone has a different and experience so, that's, so it's interesting to and hear. so what do you because that's what i was saying is like for me youtube instagram twitter my stuff i like my goal is to like educate inform inspire i want people to live their best creative lives i want to be an escape when i can be an escape but also just like a positive outlet where people can learn and be productive and hopefully i can be that to people and so every single day there's something new in the news that's terrible and i feel like people are waiting for a response from people to say but me personally i'm like there are so many people out there on both sides who are expressing their opinions on these things to where like me shouting into that void would do absolutely nothing and honestly it would probably alienate some people that i would want to be around when maybe an issue that's super close to me and that i have credibility on i can share about right and you you might affect one or two people and people might say oh well that's important to do that but really you're going to alienate and bother more people than you're going to help yeah and mostly like 99.5 percent of the people who disagree with you will disagree with you more and the yeah. person of that that agree with you will just like you more so you're really just yeah. altering to the people who already have their opinions you're not changing anyone's mind at mm-hmm. all so maybe we don't tweet about politics and uh, controversial controversial things a lot um, but there you go. Because I would probably a, get axed. I feel like I have so many things to say yeah. all the time that I'm like, dude, I don't want to lose everything yeah. instantly. Exactly. <laughs> There's a few minutes on the Creative Exchange podcast. And by the way, the one of the first reasons why I wanted to do this was because John has a podcast now. And we actually did a podcast on his progress daily show um, where he interviewed me and we get into a lot of like deep stuff we that do. is that that is similar to the stuff that we've talked to but it goes even deeper so indubitably and if you want to learn everything about sarah she talks about herself dude because that's yeah. what you do on podcasts and it's talk, very interesting yeah. so check that out in the description below show notes below 
It's a really good combo. Um, Progress Daily Show. They can you look it know. up anywhere. It's on Apple Podcasts now, right? Yes. Good. Good, good. So the thing I want to end on is a very interesting tweet from Adam22, who he has been controversial before but many people know him from the no jumper podcast and he's kind of the grandfather of the soundcloud rap scene so he has taken he's taken a lot of people from the soundcloud rap scene kind of like taking them under his wing whether that means just like promoting the crap out of them via the podcast or other videos on no jumper linking them you know he started his own label right so very successful in this uh new rap world very successful very popular twitter he's huge um so yeah adam 22 no jumper there's also been like rumors about him but as far as i know they're just rumors Um, but he just tweeted something that was completely unrelated to SoundCloud rap world, anything. And it went crazy viral with retweets and comments and people sharing their own personal stories of things. And it's something that I have talked about a lot, but now it seems to be even more like controversial. So this is the Twitter thread. He says, if you're complaining about unpaid internships, I am 100% sure you aren't ever going to make it. Next Hmm. tweet says, I don't even like having interns. It stresses me out having to tell people uh, to work, having, wait, let me repeat that. I don't even like having interns. It stresses me out having to tell people to do work for free. I would rather pay someone and feel like I can really rely on them. But an internship is basically an audition and the opportunities are worth way more than $10 an hour. So I have many thoughts about this. I have, I I feel like I have one real thought and it's, what's your man, the controversy. I don't. Yeah. Okay. So actually let me, let me address, let me address what people are saying after that too. Here are some replies. Nah, That's called taking advantage of people. Time is money, friend. Expecting free labor is pretty douchey. That has 12.5 thousand likes. Mm. Um, And then another is unpaid internships are bad. The only people who can afford to take them are people who don't really need the help in the first place. Wow, this person's grammar is terrible. Because they clearly have the money and support system to be able to do work for free. So this has been the new, you know, the new conversation around unpaid internships, which honestly I feel like is going to be illegal soon. Cause I think a lot of States have been putting things in place or like laws, but the argument is unpaid internships hurt people who are already down They're people who might have to go to work and, have to get paid to eat food and to put clothes on their back because a lot of parents can't give them those basic needs so they need to go out and work so the only people who have time to go do free internships are the people who who are already like well off money because their parents pay for the roof over their head and the food that they eat so they can take time for a free internship so that's context thoughts jonathan because we we are coming yeah there's so many variables right yeah i I think at the end of the day there's just too many variables to really determine if that's right or wrong because i I think one thing that a lot of people have trouble doing is putting themselves in the position of the person in charge because most of us are working for people most of us are getting those internships and those jobs to work for people um and I, I think you just have to think of what it was like, what it would be like if you were going to get an intern. And I think about me where I've had actually a lot of people hit me up about getting a summer intern with me. Same. And, and my answer is usually no, because I don't need one. I think. And if I, if I need a position, what I usually tend to do is I'll hire someone who has already proven in other ways that they can do the job. Yeah. I actually don't think I would ever get someone who hasn't proven them. I I wouldn't pay someone who hasn't proven themselves. I don't have the time. I don't have the time to train someone. And I, I just, I want everything to be as fast functioning as possible. And so I will say that the people like me, John, maybe a, uh, a CEO of a small company, 
a influencer of some type, a filmmaker, a director, someone in the creative field, that apprenticeship role, and that's what I think you have to think about. It. You have to think about it as a an apprenticeship, not an internship, because a lot of the circumstances, even if you're just setting up tripods or setting up something, you are going to be right in the middle of action, and you are going to be seeing, hearing invaluable things that you will not be able to get in a classroom period so you have to come at it at more of like this is an apprenticeship i'm investing in my future so instead of spending all this money on college maybe this means i'm going to bust my butt like four times a week at this job and then the other three days maybe you're working part-time and then you spend four hours a day at this apprenticeship or something i think young people always have time maybe that's me being like super privileged and i did have the advantage of my parents were able to pay for food and a roof over my head so yes i am talking from that position I think where like it's wrong. Are, yeah, most, uh, most people are, right? Are in the 1% of the Probably. World. I'm just saying, I just got to throw this out there, the number. If you're making 35000 or more, hmm. you are in the top 1% of the entire planet. Right. Not in America, but in the entire planet. So I would assume that most people in this conversation on the tweet are in the top 1%, which right. means we're all privileged. Just and, saying. yes. And it's like, oh, I feel like we're going to get so much crap for this, but it's like, how much Netflix are you watching a day? How much time are you spending iMessaging your friends? How much time are you spending on YouTube? How much of your time, like if you are so desperate to be in those, in that certain competitive creative field or the business world or the entrepreneur field, I feel like everyone when they're young and they don't have kids, they have some amount of time, even if you're working to put clothes on your back. Um, it seems, but, especially in America, it seems yeah, that way, right? Yeah, it seems that way. But where I totally agree, where the free internships are um, super bogus and just whack, is when you are doing like legitimate physical labor or something to where you you aren't in those meetings. You aren't gaining any value. This big company just needs someone to do coffee runs or needs someone to do. But even then, you are going to get some value, I think. But I totally understand it in the context of like you're interning for Capitol Records and they just need a receptionist who signs people in and gets coffee for people. Okay, doing that for free, that's pretty lame. So what do you do in that position, though? If, If you were to get that job, what do you do? If you got a, an unpaid internship, you got in there and then you're like, dude, screw this. I should be getting paid. What's your next step? Yeah. I, well, I, uh-huh. I like to think of things like that. I like to think of things as like really practical. So it's like yeah. if you have an issue with unpaid internships, that's great. But yeah. if you're in the position, what are you going to do? Yeah. Are you going to like by far if someone who I very much respected, if, if an artist that I really wanted to hang out with said, you can come hang out at my studio. I'm like, time is valuable. Like time costs me a lot of money and I can do a lot with a little bit of time. You should pay me to go there and hang out with you. No one's going to say yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, in, in but that, I think it's, yeah, it just has it's to, it's sort I of think, a different context. But I think a lot of this frustration though, that people are expressing through Twitter, I think is going towards just the system and the systematical changes that need to happen in terms of like okay yes this does favor people who are already prosperous okay however it's this weird thing that clashes also with my total uh just maybe disgust is too much of a big word but just total there at college because i think it's very similar to where with this internship thing and apprenticeship I think a lot of times an apprenticeship or an internship is way more valuable it is. than one year of college, Sorry, like I, hands I, down. Yeah, I, I will confidently say that it, it is 100%. Yeah. So it's like how can companies recognize or how can like just everyone recognize that and maybe like certain systems could be put in a place where people of – less advantaged minorities blah blah blah, they're the people who get a lot of scholarships to go to college but because of this whole system that we've set up of free money and people thinking it's free money and taking out unlimited money and then drilling them digging themselves in a hole the people who get screwed by that are the people like right in the middle just like kind of in new york city it's a good example of if you make under like thirty five thousand in new york city you can get if 
if you're lucky, you can enter a, a an apartment, an affordable housing apartment lottery, and you can get an apartment right in the middle of Manhattan for only like seven hundred dollars a month, which is insane. Mm. And then you have the people who are filthy rich, making millions of dollars, who can afford living in that same building in the middle of Midtown, you know, whatever. But it's the people in the middle that are maybe making like fifty thousand dollars, but still have a family, still that kind of get screwed because it's still it's way too expensive for them. So it's like, how can we take this model of apprenticeship, internship, and make it more accessible for those types of people that maybe wouldn't be able to afford it, but also recognizing that it's such a viable and it, it has so much right. value to where you should be stoked. Both sides should lean a little yeah, more towards the other side exactly, is what you're saying. Exactly, and like it, it, and people recognizing that it does provide so much value if you put if you're money enthusiastic is a about it, people, mo- mo- yeah. people see money as this like final conclusion, which I get because you do need the bare necessity with money to succeed. If you're not making minimum wage or, you know, even minimum wage, sometimes you can really survive fine off of because I've done it with way less than minimum you, wage. You were on food stamps at yeah, one point. I mean, I, I, you know, I thrived off way less than minimum wage for a long time and it was perfectly fine with me right? because I'm... I'm the breed that I am. Right. And I understand people aren't that way. Some people are, some people are raised, like some people are raised very wealthy mm-hmm. and then immediately they don't have anything because something happened in their lives where they don't have anything. And I actually, I totally empathize with the fact that you're going to have to learn how to how not to be the one percent. Not fancy, right? Yeah. How to, and, and that's not easy. And you can say that in a condescending way, like, oh wow, now you, now you're in the 2%. It's like, it is hard, man. It is hard for those people. And I, I agree. It's just, yeah, this intern thing, it's, yeah, the conversation, they just need to lean to both sides. People yeah. need to understand, like, that you pay for college. They don't need to understand, but this is the way that I see it. You pay for college, an internship for free with a certain person, I would find a good deal for myself yeah. on a personal Cause experience. Because flip, cause flip be- it. You could either, in a, lot of, in a lot of circumstances, you could go into debt for college. Yeah. Or right. maybe you could just, like, have not spend any money but maybe not make any money for a year and get so much more value from it you but would then spend less exactly right. yeah you, you would yeah. save money if you, you would save money college. Right, right. but there's the argument of oh but you can get loans and you can get help with a college thing so i think it's just like yes something needs to be figured out but at the same time so much and i don't think honestly that a lot of people do unpaid internships now like with the big companies right, and I was gonna say you could also I, just not do it yeah right. I think it's Which, is that hard to say There's no 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 yeah because I, really I think I think there are internships like a lot of the formal internships are going to be paid hands down but I think where the conversation gets interesting is in this creative field right and that's is those Adam 22 people to yes. where it isn't worth it for him and I'll give you a real life example for me for the first time ever I had an intern um this pa- was it summer or something you know uh Elliot he's awesome has a uh, you know he's like 16 uh he very clearly could show that he makes a video on his YouTube channel he's like such a bright kid um, and I was like, oh yeah, sure. Heck yeah. But even I couldn't get him on a consistent schedule because that was work for me to come up with things for him to do. Right. If I like, I was trying to, you know, when it comes to editing, like I even have a hard time when I get editing help to even articulate what I need. And so a lot of times I personally am never going to take an intern again yeah when if he comes back in town and like wants to help me out with stuff, heck yeah but it's very like oh i'm gonna go do this thing do you want to be included and i'm gonna tell you he was in the room with gary vaynerchuk Mm -hmm. he was in the room with debbie millman he was in the room with so many crazy people when he was helping me out that and the question is would you do that if you weren't getting paid yeah uh yeah you know like, but you then like to, yeah. yeah people would have the argument of, oh he had like a family friend member to stay in new york that's so privileged or whatever but anyways it's like it's it's like oh well, there's so many sides of it right there's there's too many variables yeah. involved to figure out a concise answer but yes it, same with me i wouldn't get an intern either because yeah. with to get in a position of some power especially if you start off with seemingly little you have to work really hard and yeah. you you work you work really hard to get to our level yeah. does that sound weird to our level of what we get to do you do have to work really and really I will really, say, really hard we're privileged yeah 
but you were in the you know. and a lot of why i'm here today is because i i worked i mean i babysat and like did all those things but again that's something that was an advantage to me because i wasn't uh you know because the money i earned from babysitting wasn't going back into food and stuff i was able to invest in myself with right. camera gear and stuff blah 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 yeah and i did every um, job known to man yeah, yeah yeah and so i had so many jobs but at the same time every waking moment of me being awake i was also doing the creative things that i wanted to eventually do for free for people just to get the experience and to be in the same room with people so i think for if you are youngish and you want to get in those rooms you want to get experience it's like uh, the only thing i would i would say yes to if someone was like Hey, I know how to ride a boosted board and I will go get you sweet green and coffee and like, like, and go to the post office for you. Those are things that I hate to do. Yeah. And honestly, I would pay someone $10 an hour right. to do. Um, but again, it would have to be on that mutual understanding that. And that nobody I, owes anyone anything. I'm exactly. Yeah. That. That uh, yeah, and that's that's a very hard thing too because like I think a lot of people who are smaller when they hit me up too they'll say like, hey dude, wonder if you can do coffee. And in my head I'm like, no, yeah. I can't do coffee because I don't have time because I work twenty four seven and I don't know you. I don't know like what kind of exchange we're gonna have. Yeah. It's awkward because you might just be a really weird mean dude, yeah. and so I don't take the time to do that. And a lot of people would think that was mean, and I forgot what my point was. Well, yeah, just the point is, yes, it's this weird, complicated world, but I think that there are so many opportunities out there right now. And yeah, but, well, it, well, when, it, when there's a will, there's a way. Right? right. Yeah. And I was just, yeah, my point was that, uh, that it's not, it's not Adam's job to make anyone else below, below him who has less money than him. It's not his job to make any of their lives easier. So if you're someone who wants to come up in the rap scene and you feel like Adam owes you for any reason is delusional yeah. because Adam has worked very hard. You could argue that or not, but he's done whatever he needed to do to be where he is today. That means you need to do whatever you need to do to be where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's required. I, you know, Adam wasn't, I'm sure Adam wasn't telling people above him like, Hey dude, like, you need to help me out. You need to do things for me. And if he did, he would have been laughed out of the room. Yeah. And it's a very toxic it's, outlook as well to to be in a zone of thinking that people owe you things. And that's which is which is like it's a which very is universal, ego thing too. It's a very universal and it's idea like though that people think that. The big ego thing when I mean, in my perspective, I'm just starting, right? I hopefully I never get into a, a brain space of like oh, I deserve or be in there because i'm special or whatever i think just i don't know if you can keep that ego in check i think the more successful you're going to be and the better the journey is going to yeah, be it might not be super quick but right and there's a lot of luck involved but also like on the on the context of ego if you're someone who thinks like man dude if only they would give me a break they would give me a break those guys are probably thinking the same thing about people above them yeah. you know like i am so like people will hit me up and act as if i'm like this this power sometimes that can like grant them something like oh post something about me i'm like that's great but i'm doing what you're doing mm -hmm. like i'm worried about the guy who has more who can teach me how to do something and i'm not cold emailing him saying like teach me this thing because for some reason i deserve it i'm like how do i get in this guy's circle how do right. i figure out like how to add value to his life like what add can i value, do that's huge yeah 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 so in the grand scheme of things, yes, this thing called life is a big rat race. So look up every once in a while, smell the flowers, kiss and hug the people in your life. Yeah, and what's really important, dude? <laughs> hey, honestly, like what's the money? Like at yeah. the end, people holding money at such a value. I know that conversation is all about money. Dog, you get the bare minimums. Past that, it's like, yeah. dude, really? Why do you need the extra? We work for the extra because... We, we enjoy this process in this race. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, dude, if you have the bare essentials, you can go outside. And yeah. And also, if you want an internship that pays, go to a big company. They're not allowed to do unpaid internships anymore. Oh, you and go. you will have your nine to five life that you'll have a decent salary and like, boom. But I just think it's, I think those times that you are going to encounter experiences where the dollar value isn't the main thing. I think those are the experiences that are really going to push you to the next level in whatever field you're in, but you don't have to 
do those. Anyways, guys, this has been a very long conversation. It was funny when I started, I was like, oh, this is just going to be a 40 minute, easygoing, chillax. But it actually turned into a very intense. Sorry about that. Conversation. But it was good. It was good. And hopefully this like sparks some conversation because I think in, you know, when we started with the political stuff, it was very kind of like right down the middle. But I think with this intern ship thing we're very clearly sorry, on one dude, side Asian, give me a break. um yeah he's he's dude, asian so don't be dude, mad, have, be mad and i'm a woman so you can't Ooh, be mad okay. at me yes thank you hey thanks mom for being asian thanks um uh, anyways for the chromosomes anyways yeah sometimes i don't think going down the middle with something is interesting right so i think this is going to stir up conversation Definitely. um so if you're watching this on youtube or you're listening anywhere um youtube hit hit up the comments with how to podcast questions and also any thoughts that we spurred from this conversation and if you're listening please tweet us at sarah Dici, at john hill tube all the links will be in the description below um and we can talk about some stuff but more importantly after you're done listening to this you should head over to john's show progress daily show and yeah we have a really cool conversation over on his podcast as well and yeah guys thank you so much for hanging out any final thoughts um thanks for tuning in thanks for trying to listen to insightful information and try to develop empathy because it will help you grow in business and in life boom there you go guys thank you so much for listening just you guys being here and listening and watching our videos it means so much i think what we have going in this little cool creative community is sick and i love it so Thank you. It's fun. Tune in every single Monday for a new episode of the Creative Exchange. And by the time that you're listening to this, maybe saradici.com resembles an actual finished website. So if you're curious, you can you can check it out. But until next time, guys, stay peachy. See you next Monday. Bye.